Alright, so if you are trying to convert your pot to be electric, you're going to need you know, a two inch copper ferrule uh, so that you can plug your electric into your still, which is that guy there. Um, but you're also going to need some tools and things to be able to do that. Um, so basically all pretty simple stuff, stuff that if you don't have at home you can get at Home Depot, Harbor Freight, Lowe's, anywhere, any of your local hardware stores. Um, so you're going to need a drill with two step bits. I like to use two step bits, but as long as you can get one that's one and three eighths, you'll be good to go. You'll need obviously some sort of propane torch. We use map gas, but it's the same thing. Um, we're going to need some sandpaper, some flux, and some solder. And you can get all this stuff except for the ferrule, which eBay, Amazon has those. All this stuff's just from the hardware store, right? Yep, yep, okay. absolutely. So you're gonna go ahead and kind of figure out where you want this element to plug into your still at, and that is where you're gonna place your ferrule. And quick caveat on this, guys, you want this element on the lower two thirds of your still, because if you put it up here, you're going to have to run this thing completely full, and as your alcohol evaporates, uh, you run the risk of putting this, running this element dry. It's always on a lower two thirds of your still, and that way you can run a smaller amount, and you never have to worry about dry firing the element. Yep. Yeah, and you don't ever, at least personally, we don't like them too low because if you do have any sediment caught up in there, um, it can stick to your element. So, like he was saying, lower two thirds is the perfect place. Um, so what I do is I'll go ahead and line up where I want it. Um, if you got a marker or something, um, you can even go ahead and mark dead center there so you know where you're going to start drilling your hole. So from there, again, you don't have to have two sizes of your step bits. I like to start with the smaller one and then work my way to the bigger one. Um, but you can totally do this with the bigger step bit. So we know where I need to start my hole at, so I'm going to go ahead and line my drill up on top of my hole. And then I'm going to go ahead and start drilling. I might be on the dead battery. We're gonna see. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out to the bigger one. Just enough cheese. Yep. You try to keep nice even pressure on it. Uh, that way it cuts nice and clean. You're going to have some burrs on the back side. Um, that's what you can use the sandpaper for. You can kind of get up in there and clean those burrs off so you've got a nice clean hole. Um, otherwise, you stick your hand in here, cut your hand, or you know, if you're cleaning, uh, it could tear up a scrubbing pad or something like that. So um, I like to clean the holes out. So we'll go ahead and kind of do that now. And while he's cleaning that, I'm going to show you something most people probably didn't notice. See how your drill generally has two settings? Yep. This was not on the fast setting. Make sure when you go through this, you have your drill set on that slower setting. It's gonna make it a lot harder to keep control of that and get a really nice clean hole if you try and do it too fast. Yep, yeah, that's a great point. Yep. So if your copper is dirty like this too, this is pretty patinaed, um, also take your sandpaper and just kind of clean it up. Um, depending on how dirty it is, you can get away with just the flux. Um, but again, we want to make sure we get a good bond. So we're going to go ahead and kind of clean up around this hole so we have a good, strong bond, a good seal. All right, so that should work. So from there, um, you can go ahead and center that ferrule over that hole. And uh, we can go ahead and add our flux. Now, what exactly is flux? What, why, what's the point, and why do you need it? Uh, so, without flux, you will be nearly—it'll be nearly impossible to ever get that solder to stick. Um, it's going to effectively clean and prepare the area um, and make it so that the solder can seal to the uh, to the parent metal um, that you are working on. In this case, copper. Um, so I without the flux, it kind of like be trying to spray paint over something you have oil or Pam on. Exactly. That's yep. Exactly. That's a great, great analogy. Yeah. Um, so I've fluxed everything up. Um, at this point, we're going to grab our solder um, and our torch. We're going to kind of start warming everything up. Um, this ferrule is thicker than this 
copper that we are soldering it to. So a lot of our heat is going to be focused on this ferrule as opposed to the uh, sidewall of this pot here. And he just said it. I'm going to say it again because I know this is one of the most important things that uh, that will get you. Make sure and heat your thicker metal up first and don't concentrate the heat on your thinner metal. Also, preheat, 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 preheat. Do not try and just heat this thing up for four or five seconds uh, and then try and solder it. Everything's got to be up to temperature, nice and hot because you're you're not melting the solder with your flame. The heat, the metal, the temperature of the metal is what's going to be melting that solder down. Yep. And I jumped in there. I'm gonna let him let him finish. Right, that's that's perfect. Um, I mean, I'd say too. It's probably worth if you're thinking about doing this. It might be worth you know hitting up your local hardware store and getting some just some copper pipe and some cheap fittings and just kind of getting a feel for things. Um, it, it always helps to you know get a little bit of practice in if you can so as you can see this ferrule is now hot enough to start accepting that solder and I can go ahead and kind of melt it to the sides and then point it down at that metal so we're going to do that we're going to work all the way around the entire thing here See how even when that torch is spinning and sputtering, you see how that uh, solder is still laying out and melting because he's got the base metal heated up enough to melt the solder instead of relying on the flame to melt it. Go back around one time, make sure everything's nice and sealed. And at that point, that ferrule is on there. There we go. See, that this is one of the things you want to look for, folks. Uh, look inside. You know, you see how there's a nice, even ring of solder where that's one of the other things the flux does and the preheating if you don't have it if you don't have this hot enough your solder is just going to stick to the outside if you don't have this preheated so by preheating this it causes that solder to draw up into those holes and now you're pretty much about ready to go yep so then you take some damp rags and you can once it's cooled down and solidified you can go ahead and start kind of cleaning this up and wiping all the flux off And if you can't tell, Mr. Warnicky here has done this once or twice. He's been doing it for a minute. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's all about your heat control. Um, you know, you want to get things to the proper temperature without overheating it. Um, that's why I'm, I would definitely recommend if you can get some just some cheap scrap to kind of practice with, whether it's a couple of 90 degree elbows, three quarter 90 degree elbows, you can get pretty cheap at your hardware store and, you know, a couple feet of pipe to just kind of learn sweating sweating uh sweating elbows on the pipe i mean that stuff is going to come in handy down the road if you're if you if you've got a still learning how to sweat pipe and do these kind of things is definitely going to pay off for you and that's one thing when you saw um i'm gonna go back and put a note in it but when you saw him he was heating it up and he touched that solder just real quick and then took it away and kept heating it up that's one one way you can kind of tell if that solder doesn't you move the flame and the solder doesn't start to melt, you're not hot enough. Yep. All right, so make sure, don't just heat it, heat it, heat it. Don't spend 10 minutes heating it. As soon as that solder starts to flow out, hey, you're good, and you can rock and roll and, and get that on. And that is a very, very pretty, very solid uh, weld. That's not going anywhere, right. and that's going to hold that metal, uh, or that's going to hold that element and let you start yep. heating up with electric. Yep.